Hello and welcome to Winning Conversations. It's February, it's almost Valentine's Day, and we're really excited to bring you this next episode of our couple series. We are talking about all things marriage, love, relationships, and communication all month long. And today we have a special episode for you. We sit down with our senior pastors, Pastor Justin and Annette Bridges. Their love story is one of restoration and hope. It was such a joy to hear them talk about the ebbs and flows of marriage and faith and uh, living a life in ministry and how they navigate it all with such grace. We want to encourage you with this episode that walking through a marriage in faith can bring you to victory on the other side. And I want to go ahead and jump right into the conversation and hope you enjoy it. Hi, everybody. We're so glad to have Pastor Justin and Annette joining us today on our couple series. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! Hey. It's going to be so much fun. This is Hannah and Tanya is joining me today. Hello, Hannah. Hello. So let's get straight into some questions. Does that sound okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your love story. How did you meet? How did God bring you two together? Uh, how long do we have? A little bit of a how, long long how long do you have and how long can the story be? Uh, is this podcast in three parts or one? <laughs> Part one. Oh, before we get started, I just want to say happy Valentine's Day to all the heritage oh, couples out yes. there and all those yes. that are all those that are listening. So, yo, yo men, uh, don't forget four days from now uh, is Valentine's Day. So, if you haven't gotten anything, uh, if you by, haven't now, got anything by now, you're probably too late. But um, Hey, I'm giving you some help here. So anyway, but anyway, it's great being uh, uh, with you, Tanya and Hannah, and uh, we're excited about um, being able to part of this today. Hey, it's so great to have you guys. I think you have such a cool story. Anyway, I love it. I don't care how long it takes. Let's so, it. So, okay. so love story. For me, I guess it, it began praying for you, Aww. totally praying for you. Wow. Yeah. Such a... Oh, I'm going to cry. Tissues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was like I heard the Holy Spirit say to pray for you, so I did. And Iris is a a different type of story. It's a story of restoration. Yeah, totally. I was a single mom and been a single mom for about four or five years whenever I met you, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, I'd been coming to the church, and um, um, I, I know I remember the day. I remember clearly the Lord said to start praying for you, and so I did. Uh, I guess for for me, it was just, um, even though she worked here, ran the daycare, um, we didn't really have any conversations or, um, we weren't really connected as in friendship or even, uh, having any, um, any get togethers or anything part of it like, like that. And I remember, um, after going through a particular situation, um, and not even really wanting to be in a relationship or looking for a relationship Same. and, um, and I remember it being at um, the Believers Convention and was just worshiping, and and the Holy Spirit told me loud and clear and said, I'm preparing for you an Abigail. And one, I was like, okay, who is Abigail? What's Abigail? And he, was, he goes, I want you to do a research and a study on Abigail from Scripture. And and so I did. And um, and so, so not knowing completely her story and things that she had gone through and had faced— um, you know, one, I looked up the word Abigail and, um, in the, in the Hebrew, the word Abigail means short. Um, that's hilarious. Then, <laughs> I did not know, you know that. <laughs> but it said, but it said of, um, when it was talking about her in scripture, it said that she was beautiful in countenance and had an understanding spirit. Mm-hmm. And so it was like, okay. And so, and then, and then I got, you know, then I, he said, I want you to look at the story of Abigail. And when I started looking at the story of Abigail and how she honored um, Nabal, she honored her husband. Um, and in spite of, um, you know, what he had done to David or how he had treated the king at that time. And, um, and so just, and then, and then there was another, it was probably the next Believers Convention, same year, but in a different city I'm from California to, um, uh, another city we were at, and I remember just seeking the Lord again, and and then all of a sudden I, you know, she just came up in my heart and kind of just saw her face, and I was like, it was kind of like I just kind of like put it on the shelf, and it's like, okay, what's this? And um, next thing I know, um, we just um, her her son was doing a music event, and and I just had in my heart just to kind of like to go, and so I showed up, Aww. and and. Um, and so I'm, I go to this venue where the music is, and 
I was like, I don't think Annette's here. And uh, and so little did I, I know, little know she was upstairs at the venue and I was downstairs. And um, and so anyway, it was, but it was just this journey of like, um, kind of like what Dr. Savelle talks about with Miss Carolyn and said he didn't know why he would come back from university when he was going in, I think, Northwestern at the time. And mm-hmm. and he was just drawn. And, and it was the same thing, just to build this relationship. And um, I wasn't really wanting to be in a relationship because, I mean, it had been so soon after um, a previous relationship. and But at the same time, it was like, how does a pastor date? What does that look like? And you know, so we just pretty much just developed a friendship. Mm-hmm. But um, it was scary. I mean, cause I had to pray about it too. I didn't want, mm-hmm. I wasn't looking to get married again. I had already made up my mind. I was okay to be single for the rest of my life. I was good with oh, it. Yes. And so I had to really pray about it. And I, I know the drive here and just every time I, I could hear God's voice, I know exactly where I was on the drive from where I was living to come here to go to the take care to work. And um, God gave me a dream, and in the dream, he showed me that I was to pursue this. This this was his will. But I hadn't said anything to him. We hadn't even started Mm -hmm. talking, but it was like, I don't even want to even start a friendship. I mean, because that's not the kind of person I was. You know, I don't date just to date. Yes, right. Um, So... um, so yeah, it was it was very scary moving forward because again, how do you how do you date yeah. a pastor? You know? Yeah, I don't. How do you date a pastor? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you do, you, do you couples ministry each other? Like, <laughs> uh, it was horrible. It, it was, but it <laughs> yeah, I would sit. I would. He would sit in the front where he always sits, and I would sit like five rows behind him, and he would walk down the aisle like hugging. You know, hi. I'm so glad you're here. And he kind of give me this side hug and I'm like, okay. And we get you. Hey, I know. Girl. Like a side hug, side hug. And every now and then I'd be watching him worshiping and he'd turn oh. around and he'd look at me and it was just kind of awkward. Yeah, it was. Um, <laughs> was like, are you looking at me or are you looking at the girl in front of me? My, my, I do remember that story. My heart, That's a good one. My heart in, 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 as the Lord brought us together was how do I honor the call in my life? How do I honor the church? Um, cause the church had been through a lot. Um, how do I honor the Savelles? Um, and what does that look like? And so I remember, um, so three months after, um, the Lord showed me those things and us not really having a, wh- a whole lot of conversations about that. Just, just t- pretty much talking on the phone. We didn't like go on dates. It wasn't anything like that. It was more like building a friendship. And, um, I remember, um, talking to the Savelles and it was in, I believe it was September, uh, end of August, September. And I remember, um, talking to Dr. Savelle and said, I just want you to know, because I didn't want there to be rumors. I didn't want things right. to grant. So I just was just open and honest with him and said, just want you to know that, you know, um, I'm talking to someone and I told him who it was and he kind of just put a grin on his face. He goes, Oh, wow. Okay. And that, and it kind of left it at that. And then, then it was uh, Thanksgiving weekend um, so it was a couple months, a few months after that. And, um, and I, I talked to them and him again and said, just want you to know, you know, my parents are coming in town and uh, I'd like my parents to have the opportunity to meet her. Um, but this is kind of where things are, but if you don't feel good about it, I, it's not something I'm going to pursue. And so he says, let me, let me think about it. So they went away and, um, talked about it, I guess, prayed over it. And then that Sunday morning, Sunday after Thanksgiving, he, um, Call, called me in the green room. He had other people that were in there to step out for a moment, and him and Miss Carolyn talked to me, and they said, you know what? We've talked about it, and we prayed about it, and we, be- we believe this is a God thing. And, um, and, so, and, and so I just we waited till after uh, my parents came in, had the opportunity to meet her, and then we waited into the next year. And so um, I felt kind of bad because it was just like, it was like, do you not want to be seen with me in public? Is this, and, and, and I know her heart and it had nothing to do with it yeah. because to me more than anything I had, I had to tell her, just trust me. We need to do things honorably. We need to do things the right way. Mm-hmm. And, um, and so we had a lot of funny stories, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think in December we went to, um, a movie, I think it was, no, a we went to. What was it? Steak place where they bring all the food to you. Oh, Texas, Texas State Brazil. Yes, we did a, a Christmas party there. Yeah. And we kind of sat somewhere close to each other and people were kind of like, okay, well. Oh, they what's going on okay. down there at that end and of then, the table? Um, 
And then in January, we had the volunteer banquet. And so we kind of sat at the same table and people were just like, okay, okay. So in January, when we finally announced. I think it was February when we announced something. That we were. Well, actually it was, was, I don't think it was until we actually were engaged, which would have been March 23rd. Okay. Yeah, no, definitely March March 23rd, 2008. The church stood up. Oh yeah, and they, everyone stood oh, up and cheered. Yeah, and, and they all clapped. Oh, and no. it was it was. And great. before that point, we hadn't even been sitting together. No. Wow. but people knew. They just kind of knew. Yeah, well, <laughs> they rejoicing with you. That's right. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that was so cool. It was awesome. And so that's I mean that's a little bit of our story. I mean, mm-hmm. but it's really to me it speaks of God's restoration totally and, um, and God's faithfulness mm-hmm. uh, in that. And so. You know, this coming July be fifteen years. Fifteen, right? Praise God. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it was and, totally a God thing. Praying about how to how to love Him the way He needed to be loved. Yes, that was new. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How did it go blending the families together? Um, you know that I I love being a, a stepdad. I love being I, I don't call it. I love being a bonus dad. Yeah. Um. But I think for me, early on, I remember we went to a marriage thing in um, Chicago. It was called um, a Weekend to Remember. And I remember um, not realizing some things that um, Annette um, was really thinking about, you know, the situation with the blended family, especially dealing with um, her children. And and I think I, I kind of went about things wrong in the, in, in the beginning because it was like I was trying to be their friend. Um, and um, But in that, I know the Lord spoke to me when we, we got together and I asked Lord, I said, so what, what's the biggest thing and what's the biggest thing I can do? He goes, the biggest thing you need to be for her children is stability. You know, that's, yeah. what, they, they, wow. that's what they need. They, they need stability. And so for me, it was some things where it was, you know, I kind of – necessarily I, I didn't want to come in and be a be I don't want to take the place of their dad I don't want to I don't I'm not here to fulfill that role you know but I want to be um everything I can be God's called me into their life and so I want to be everything I can be so you know Annette had to you know speak into my life like you, you need to you need to take that role and you need to do that so it was it was challenging for me um in that um and uh, you know that's the blended family thing's probably been challenging um just with with uh with Bryn and and the and and the other and Andy Corey and Ryan um you know so it's just been a learning process um you might be able to speak more into that oh, <laughs> I, I think I mean he was a an answer for my children for sure I don't think my kids would be where they where they are if it wasn't for Justin they I would, would not I, I believe that's a true statement. I think. Oh gosh, with everything inside of me. I mean, yeah. um, Ryan was a sophomore or junior. He, he was a sophomore. He was a sophomore, so <laughs> he was praying about where he was supposed to go to school. And I mean, even though we were a Christian home, and you know, my kids were PKs since they were born, um, our level of faith wasn't where where Justin's was. So whenever I told him what his, his dream was, was to go to Australia and be a part of Hillsong. Um, Justin said, you know, you need to set your faith for that. And he had never even considered that. It was like, this is, it's just way out there. This is what I want to do, but it's a dream, but we're not going to think it's, we don't think it's going to happen. So if it wasn't for Justin, he wouldn't have gone. He certainly wouldn't have gone. He would not have put his faith out there. And, um, and just the, the challenges, you know, um, that my, you know, the kids have had just, Justin being their stability has been, they just wouldn't be where they are right now. Praise God. And when the kids say it themselves, I just heard one of your kids like last week or two Aww. weeks ago say, I want to be a dad just like him. Man, I want to be a dad so bad. Yeah. And so that cry. speaks volumes. Yeah. I mean, oh, for sure. When it comes from the mouth of a yeah. child, yeah. you know. And I, when we got together or when we started talking, I guess Bryn was, a little over a year old. He, I mean, he would have been um, almost two. Almost two, yeah, wow. eighteen months, almost two years old. I remember his two-year-old birthday party. Yeah. And and so, so I remember, you know, one of the first things that she did, she made him a Mickey Mouse pillow. 
Yeah. And, and he, still, he has still has it. No way. Oh, that's so sweet. You know, well, we, yeah, I saw him every day. And so <laughs> right? I can remember, we still have pictures from our rapping party where I've got him on my shoulder and I'm putting him to sleep after he'd been playing the drums and we're wrapping gifts on a Wednesday and stuff. So, <laughs> I mean, so I've just always been a part of his life. He's always right. called me Net. 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 Yeah, so. Mm. I remember when we had Lucas, you guys came over to our house. Yes. He was, I think, three or four. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was a baby. And I remember you're like, oh, I get to, we get to go home now. Yes. <laughs> and it, and it such was such a sweet. It was so, um, having Bran was like grace for me. It was like starting over. I get to start over, you know, because as a young mom, we make mistakes. And so um, there's grace to cover that as well. But I knew being his bonus mom, I felt just honored. I thought this is a, a chance I get to do it right or try to do it right with a better perspective and a better, I mean, obviously just because having a greater um, marriage, you know, right. more stable and, and um, based in God and his word and stuff. So I thought, oh good, I get to do this again oh. and do it right, hopefully. So with being bonus parents, which is amazing, how are communication styles different? Um, how have you guys learned to grow with each other's communication styles and things like that? That's a great question. I thought about this one. Um, <laughs> so she's got to answer loaded and answer. ready. Me, 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 me. Because she, she's a lot better than me. You put well, it that way. you know, when we first got started, the way we communicated, because we came from other relationships, yes. It's not just how you say something, but it's how you hear it or how the other person perceives how you said it. Absolutely. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so it, we had <laughs> to change we had to change how we said things and then how we heard things as well because you know, we were hearing it with old ears, you know, yes. just old perceptions. And so we had to understand each other like I, I'm not that other person, and I. they may have said it this way and meant this, but when I say it, you've got to know my heart. You've got to know behind what I'm saying. And so we had to talk a lot of things out. Mm-hmm. It's like, you know, that's not yeah. what I meant, and you, we need to calm down, both of us, you know. Yes. Um, I would say the first, like the first Christmas that we had and, and her family came in, and, um, you know, being around her mom, her dad, her sisters were there, and I, and I walk and we're in, talking Spanglish. And, and, and it is, it is so loud. Multicultural. It, it's so loud. And I'm like. Why are I'm you like, all yelling at I'm like, each other? I'm like, why are you all mad at each other? And I we're think, not. This is how we talk. <laughs> you know, are you so, hungry or not? For me, I'm like, oh my gosh. And, and, You're and in so, the corner praying so, the Holy Ghost it, trying it, to make sure it, it, okay. And, and so the same thing on how she would communicate with me. It was just really, like, she's just communicating but but it's like communicating here and for me so i hear it here i'm like okay what just happened it's <laughs> What's all going those on? awe moments yes. when you spend and time with the family and you realize they're just talking this is how we talk yes. yep. i'm not mad and then the same thing goes whenever I went to go spend time you know with his family and they don't talk yeah, it's oh, like, I so it's get that Sotari and I. Oh, yeah, hundred percent. Yes, what's happening? <laughs> and like the racial differences are a big thing. Totally, like, usually with communication. Yeah, we make decisions. <laughs> We're doing this, and they're like, "Oh, whatever you want. No, whatever you want. No, whatever you want." It's like nobody's ever going to get out of this house if somebody doesn't make a decision. <laughs> It's like, we're going here. We're doing it. Let's yeah. go now. Oh, yes. Mom and dad, if you're listening to this, we love you. We love we'll you so you. much. We'll, <laughs> we'll go to dinner wherever you want to go. But yeah. you know, but that's, but that's just, they're, they're very considerate of one another. It's like, no, whatever you want. And in my family, we don't want, no, nobody considers. This we, is what we're doing. This is what we're doing. We didn't even ask you what you wanted. <laughs> we don't ask what would you rather do. We're like, we're doing it. Oh, that's awesome. This is a plan. Go along with the plan. Exactly. Yeah. So when Justin and I met and started dating and he would ask me like, what do you like? And I'm like, I don't know. Whatever you tell me I like, I like. Because that's how I was raised, yeah. you know? And that's how I raised my children too. And my kids will tell you the same thing. It's like, I don't like broccoli. Yes, you do. You like broccoli. No, I don't. Yes, you, you do. Like, you like, Andy, you like tomatoes. You Andy, do like yeah. tomatoes. You're just speaking it into <laughs> existence, I don't like tomatoes. right? Yeah. That, but that's how I was raised. Yeah. I'm not hungry. Right. Yes, you are. Here's your food. Eat it. Eat another tortilla. (laughs) And you're going like, what? But that's my family. And and so we were so different. Oh, yes. (laughs) So different. So that was hilarious when we first got married communicating. 
and he's so happy in the morning and would be singing. Oh, that's sweet. And it's sweet. like, are you talking to me right now? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> Who is like, this I don't, person? It's like I don't really have down days. And I'm, and people ask me, are you a morning person or are you a night person? I'm whatever yes. I need to be person. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. If I yes, get up yes. early, yes. I'm good. If I'm, if I'm up late like, at night, I'm, I'm good. That's, that's great. So speaking of like funny quirks and things like that. So I want to know... What is what is one of the, your spouse's quirks or funny things or unique things or things that they always always say? Something that just you know that was just Pastor Justin. You know that was Pastor Nett. Like, <laughs> oh gosh, something fun. A quirk. A unique thing. I, I tried thinking about this. I, I, Every I time you see a child, you stick your finger in your mouth and you want to pop it. I do. Yeah. A, uh, a like, child. Yeah, to oh, a, a child. child. Oh, he goes. Like, that's he'll hilarious. look at the baby and he'll go. Pop and I'm like, yeah. oh my gosh! Why are you doing that? I think I've seen that's you. That's why do he that hi- That's why you don't come by the children's department so much. Yeah, and you and pop I, in your finger I, the whole time. I, it'll make bird sounds or something. <laughs> yeah, it'll make a bird sound or do. Yeah, I'm like, oh, uh, uh, are, you? are you cooing right now? What is that that you're doing? That's yeah, the only thing I can think. Don't of. make fun of my dove sound. It's okay. sorry. Oh yes, it's a dove. <laughs> It's a dove. Okay, now we yeah. absolutely have to hear the dove. No. Uh-uh. Or a sick moose. No. no or uh-uh. a sick moose. No, what it's a duck call. Like? I can't even do, do that the, now. Do your <laughs> moose call. <laughs> <laughs> See? I told you. It's like, what is that? It's a pigeon. <laughs> it's not even good. It's like, I'm out of practice because I, she won't let me do it anymore. So. Like, I'm like, stop. I'm like, please stop <laughs> doing that. Do that. <laughs> or you could be like a goose, like, uh-huh. There, that's uh, the one. No way. Uh, do the kids just eat that uh, up? Do they no. just love no, they that? They look at you like, <laughs> well, I think they that. do. I think they do, but she doesn't. It, it's, what is you that know. weird guy doing? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, Papa, what are you doing, Papa? Yeah. Like, Papa, you look kind of weird right now. Yeah. Okay, what's my quirk? She's like, say a good cricket, one. Cricket, cricket, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, just trying to, I'm trying to think of quirks. I'm just trying to think. Or something unique about her that, you know, it's only like, that, that was Pastor in it. That wasn't it. She did that. Okay, something sweet that you love about her. I'll give you a cheesy one. I would say she's just so 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 thoughtful. Like she remembers birthdays. She, Aww. you know, um, she'll communicate to people that may have left the church or are no longer here, and they're they're going to other churches. But yet she'll still spend so much time in communication with them. Um, you know, so I'd say just her pastor's heart. Um, you know, just getting gifts or, re- like I said, for me, I'm horrible with birthdays. I mean, I, I remember hers and families, but other people, it's just like, oh, it's so-and-so's birthday today. And I was like, oh, maybe we should get them a card. Oh, I sent one out two weeks ago. It's like, you know, it's already done. So so for me, I just her thoughtfulness and just her, her pastor's heart and just caring, I would say. But maybe there will be a quirk that will come to me by the end. <laughs> the end of I'm podcast. sure there will. And Tilly's been a witness to one of your gift givings. I think it was right when we started first started coming yes. here. And you found my house. Yes. And you put crayons and coloring books out there for Aww, Tilly. Yeah. Didn't even know that was one of her little love languages. She loves coloring. Oh, and yeah, that's so right. so anyways, totally blessed us. Aww. So and was it right awesome. before Christmas or something? Yeah, oh, after. It was right February. After mm-hmm. Okay. It was in February. You remember too. Yeah. See, remember Pastor Hearts. See, they have such good Pastor Hearts. <laughs> Okay, so so Pastor gave us a unique gift or, uh, of yours, but what's one that you love about him? He remembers people's names like no other. And people. He just remembers people. Everywhere we go, he knows people. And wow. I just, yeah, when we were together, it was like, oh, my goodness, trying to walk through a convention and, and taking two steps since he knew somebody else. Two Aww. more steps and he knew somebody else. And not only that, they knew him. Yes. They just loved him and everything. Oh, he's so wonderful. And oh, Justin and your smile. And they just go on and on and on. And they're like, and who is this person standing behind you? Oh, I get that a lot. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. they know him. Yes. Everyone knows. Right. And he knows everyone. Yeah. So he's really good with names, extremely. Do you know you. Steve Carell? Yeah. Do you know Steve <laughs> How Carell? many times do you get that? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, last night we had a game up in Flower Mound. And there, uh, where Bryn plays basketball for, they have eight different teams, four girls' teams, four guys' teams. And so the varsity girls played right before him. And so there was this group of girls sitting behind behind me on the bleachers. And then afterwards, two of them came up to me and said, does anyone tell you that you look like Steve Carell? I'm like, every week. Every week. They're yeah. like, and they're like, oh, 
You know, yeah. I said, yeah. I said, you know, I've had, I've been preaching and get off the stage and, and I'll have like visitors come up to me and young, Do you know young people. You and it's like? like, oh, you look like the guy from the office, Steve Carell. I'm like, yeah, I, yeah. I, I get that I a lot. Yeah. If, if you ha- if you're listening, you've never seen Pastor Justin, just look at Steve Carell and you've seen Pastor it's him. Justin. Totally. <laughs> yeah. I always tell them, but I'm funnier. So. Yeah, right. <laughs> Funny. So what one and one of the girls said you should start signing autographs and just well, you should. <laughs> That's yeah. funny. So it, for for anybody in ministry and mm-hmm. in a marriage, I mean the dynamic of the those two things together can be uh, can cause I don't know if tension is the right word, but can cause lots of complex things to go on mm-hmm. as it relates to your marriage. How do you guys walk through things when you don't necessarily see eye to eye? Or when there's a decision to be made and you're not necessarily starting in the same place? Uh, I would say, one, I I necessarily probably wouldn't go forward um, if she wasn't in agreement. Um, sometimes for me, I'm, I, I'm a processor, so, so I'll take some time thinking about things for a period of time, even before I talk to her about it, which is probably not, not good. Probably should talk out the process with her more. Um, and so there'll be some things, um, that, um, I'll share with her. Well, what do you think about this? And what do you think about that? Um, and I mean, very rarely have I ever made a decision and said, we're doing this haven't, and I haven't communicated it to her. Mm-hmm. Um, but either way, I've always said, well, I trust you. Yeah, that's and that's really what it's, even when it comes to giving, you know, what would you like to give? Well, what are you hearing? What are you hearing? And, you know, I trust that you're going to hear and you're going to, you're going to obey. Um, there, there's been times where when we had some different things in ministry and, um, you know, I remember leaving the church one day and, and coming home and on lunch break. And, um, and she just looked over and she goes, you know, that's one of the last meetings I'm ever going to sit in. <laughs> and it was a staff meeting. It was a staff meeting. <laughs> and, um, that was her. and was it was like, in which we both knew that it was, it was time for some adjustments. It was time that the Lord was doing some things at that time. And, and, but it was a journey. It was a journey we had to both walk through together. Um, and, and God worked everything out. So, um, but it was one of those things where she was just, you know, kind of, you know, like, look, this is, cause she knew that it wasn't ultimately her heart was for me because she knew that what was taking place wasn't, wasn't, um, protecting me or was it something that was going to cause the church to, to, to grow or be beneficial. Right. And so I know her, I know her statement was, um, not necessarily t- towards me, it was towards how it it was affecting me and how it was affecting the church and knew that it was it was time for some adjustments and some of those things and then so we talked about it and we came together on it and and you know and God you know brought about the changes that needed to take place and 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 things went well and we walked through that that season um and we were both obedient i mean that was yeah. probably one of the toughest conversations we've ever had right but i was like at my end and, and there's things where I know I've done not necessarily protect her um, in certain meetings if if um, certain parties communicated things within a meeting where because I'm a processor I'm not a I'm not a res- I'm not a reactor I I'm, I'm going to I'm going to think things through it before I respond and which isn't always effective because I know in the downfall for me was of the thing of being led by the spirit and also pleasing people. And so in the fa- in the fact of trying to please people, I would take too long to process and, and it, and it, I'd miss my window of opportunity. And by that time and we've by all that been time, run over by, by that time. It's like, just picking up the pieces. You know, yeah. what, I mean? yeah. you know what I mean? And, and it, and it's, and it's her feeling like, you know, you didn't, you didn't protect me. Mm-hmm. I didn't feel like you protected me in that moment. Yeah, I've, I've I've missed it there um, on on a couple of occasions. You know, just being transparent and and uh-huh. honest, and because I mean, she is she has been my biggest cheerleader. Um, I believe when she came into my life, my ability to teach and minister went to another level. I believe that um, she definitely is a helpmate in, in those areas. So so I don't feel like there's been times where I probably have been 
stronger in that area than she had been for me. You know, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it it just makes me think of the like, kind of the next natural question would be like, how was that on your end? Like you obviously yeah. trusted his heart. You knew that his heart was to protect you and right. to do that, but you also understood the position that he was in. Right. In so, I mean, obviously I didn't say anything. I just kind of sensed I needed to, you know, take take a certain place and just allow the Holy Spirit to work, um, which he did. He always, you know, when we honor or when we're honorable, God always comes through. He honors us when we are honorable <laughs> in not demanding your own way or, um, you know, being too outspoken. Because I think that's where I feel like the Lord's changed me is not quick to react, but um, also listening to the Holy Spirit, you know, going, okay, is this, am I supposed to say something here? Am I not supposed to say something here? Um, so we're always processing. Yeah. How does love respond? Mm -hmm. And because it can be, be quick to, you know, she may say something that's truth and it's true of what she's saying. And, and so I have to know, and I know, I know her heart for me is the best. And so I know it's coming from a position of love. So, so for me, it's to receive it in that and, and vice versa. And so love believes the best. So, I mean, that's, that's how I try to really approach every relationship is mm -hmm. how can I serve you? Um, how, you know, how can I serve this person? How can I serve my staff, my spouse, my children? Right. How can I, how can I serve in that way? And so, so, it, so when she says this things to me at first, my flesh would be like, you know, like, why'd you say that? But, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I know it's coming from her heart and I know it's not, not to belittle me or anything like that. Well, and the same and goes so, the other way, vice versa. I mean, right. if he says something to me, obviously I'm going to hear his heart first um but just you know being in a in a setting where you know you're feeling like as a as a woman you're being attacked and you're going okay where's my spouse where's my spouse but yet my spouse is also the pastor <laughs> so he also has to consider the other people and so it's kind of like you know when you're in ministry it is complicated it totally is so um I always have to just trust that God's gonna He's going to take care of us, you know. I I'm never going to overstep what he says, you know. I'm I'm always going to try to, you know, to honor what his decision, mm -hmm. you know, especially in that kind of a a setting. Yes. Um, and so you, you know, I didn't say anything in that particular meeting, but afterwards, I was like, oh, I wish you would have said something because I really felt like I was being attacked. Mm -hmm. Um. But I mean, I I I still feel like it turned out fine yeah it, i mean I, I believe it did and so it's you've attended more staff meetings since yeah i, I, I love when probably, you're in a meeting i still went <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was like probably 10 years ago so what is it like to have a marriage in a glass house where you are on a public stage mm -hmm. you're part of an international ministry and yet uh your 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 lovers you're married you're yeah. you're um I mean, obviously you want to protect each other, but yeah. what is that like when when other demands of ministry encroach on your time or your mm -hmm. space or your your mental bandwidth? Yeah. How does that affect your relationship? And family. And family. Yeah. <laughs> How, there, yeah, there's all kinds of things pulling at us. Yeah, I, I would I would say what's um something that we've constantly had to do is get away, not to escape. Not, it's not an escapism mentality. But we have to get away to spend time together. Um, in some seasons, it's harder than others. Um, you know, like in this season, uh, right now we've had so much going on with Andy getting married and uh, Ryan Joy and, um, and our grandkids moving in with us as well. Um, and so it's less, um, you know, Brennan's playing basketball five, four or five days a week. So it's just like having that extra time with just her and I. It's like... I think we went the other night, it was like, oh, we're eating dinner out together by ourselves. And we, <laughs> and we were trying to think of when that happened, you know, before that. Mm -hmm. And it had been a long and, time. And it, and it had been, it had been like a month. <laughs> so and you, it was could like, have, you could have asked me this years ago. And I would have, <clears throat> and, and in fact, whenever, you know, I did talk to uh, 
other wives that are in ministry, and they would ask me, like, what's the number one thing? What What's the number one thing that I should need to remember in being in ministry? Tell me about, what's the number one thing? And I was like, spend time with your husband. <laughs> oh, amen. They're like, what? That's good. Yeah. Like, yeah. Spend time with your husband. Put yeah. him first. Honor him and spend time with him. And they're like, really? I'm like, yes. Yes. Not writing your newsletters, not yeah. making connections, not, you know, networking. Not there's so many different hats within ministry yes. that and you not hold. Even, and not even your children. Yes. Because, you know, I came from, you know, my kids were everything. Yeah. You know, and then when Justin and I started somewhat dating it was and then we got married and we actually would go off on short vacations it there was a guilt factor it was like oh my gosh I'm leaving my family I'm leaving the church how can we do this who's going to take care of the church how can we not be there because you know feeling like you're the one the only one that can do any of it but you know God honors that you honor yeah. each other yeah that you honor this union yes. because if this isn't strong that's your first ministry this is it yes yeah. Absolutely. Even before your children, because yes. if this isn't good, that's not going to be good. Right. You know? Um, and so I, I love that about us that, you know, and, and Justin, he, he says, we're going, yes. I, I'm planning it. And he started doing that, you know, a long time ago, like from the very beginning, I've, I booked a trip. We're going I'm like, Oh, but I got, Nope, we're going. I'm like, okay. We're going. <laughs> and it's going to be great. And obviously the first three days you're still kind of you know, coming off of... Yeah, got to get off of everything that's going <laughs> yeah. on. Yeah. yeah so that doing, that's right? Miss Carolyn. She told us that early on. She was like, you need to go somewhere four times a year. I'm like, wow. 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 Four times a year. That'd be nice. <laughs> uh, you know, we don't quite get four times because usually we'll we'll do things, you just us two, but then we do things with family and those things right. too. But, you know, we, we need that time. We, we like to travel. Um, so when we have the opportunity to, and it works out financial wise and everything that's what we do because it's like we have to totally disengage um not that we can't be here or stay home and do things that's not the point the point is for us what's best for us is if we go somewhere mm -hmm. because at, at home we're gonna we're gonna think of all the things that yes. we have to do here and all those things and and it's just we need that 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 time where we're not thinking about yeah and, and the middle of the ocean seems to be the answer for us. <laughs> there's no desk right there, right? Yeah, there. Yeah, in the middle no of the phone. ocean. We don't get, you know, the... There's no sheep out there. <laughs> there's no problems at the church. There's no... no. We turn off our Fires phones. to put out. That's right. You know, yep. Europe. Um, we like yeah. Europe. You know, Italy. I, we like... I have to tell you, one of the best things that Justin did for our, our um, relationship and our marriage was um, uh, early on, he... I don't even know how we got into the conversation, but for Valentine's, I don't even, how long ago was it? Years ago. I think we had just been married four or five years. You got us um, ballroom dancing lessons yeah. for, for Valentine's. Oh, that's so cute. It was the best. Oh. Did you both do good at it? We did okay. Yeah, but we had a blast. She's a, she's a lot better than me, but uh, <laughs> but it, we did. It was fun. It was all about we did the fun. Room dancing. That's so and fun. We like uh, murder mystery dinners. Yeah, oh, those are fun. We like we we mystery. like escape rooms. Escape rooms. Yes. I was know, gonna say. Um, escape rooms. There's also things that we would like um, reading books. So. We would actually we'd read a book together. We'd read a book together. Oh. She'd read a chapter out loud, then I'd read a chapter out oh, loud. Oh, that's so sweet. Um, yes. One of one of our favorite books. One one of the trips we did was um, uh, a Frank Peretti book. I think it was the, the Oath. The um, Oath. You know. And then we did the the war one. Yeah, Lone Survivor. Lone Survivor, and which, then we did Redeeming Love, and we balled. Oh, like Redeeming babies. Love is so good. We balled. We just. Oh balled. yes. Oh Oh, yes, so I did ball, and I yes, yeah, I did read. Did. did you cry too? I did. Oh, I did. I, I the book confess. is so good. Yes, so, but we like reading books together. <clears throat> yeah, so we we like Aww. to read, and and before you know, I met Annette. I didn't read for leisure because right. I was always a student of the word and those types of things. Yeah. But but um, I got to the, where I like reading, you know, um, uh, novels. Christ, Christian novels, suspense mm -hmm. um, type books, and um, anyway, it's it's a. Uh, the neat, oh, great. cute little yeah. thing. Yeah. It is, yeah. and he's amazing. He always figures out who did it or what. Yeah, I'm like, don't tell me. He solves the mystery. Yes. yes. Like, yes. we're barely in half the book, and you already know who it is. Don't tell me. Like Hallmark <laughs> movies. They're all the same. They're, they're all, all going to the have the same, same ending, you know? So it's going to happen. Yeah. So we, we have a lot We have a lot of fun. We, we like to cook. Um, she's an amazing cook. 
And so you make good chicken divan. Yeah, chicken. <laughs> and then uh, I do the meat. She does the other stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. All the sides. We've heard about your famous uh, smoking ability on meats. Yeah. Yes. So. He is good. Very good. good. Okay, so we want to do something kind of fun since it's the month of Valentine's. <laughs> okay. We're going to play a game, and it's going to be, or we're just going to, we're just going to say, Who's most likely to, and then something, and I want you guys to answer. So it has to be answered quick, right? Answer not, quick, yeah. So, so if you both say each other's names, we'll know right away. But it'll be fun because they're just quirky. They're just fun things. Yeah. So um, you guys said some of these already. Who gets to pick the music in the car? Who's most likely to pick Justin. the music in the car? Well, I, I would say me, but typically because she used to have a lot of noise going on when we were together in the car, it would be nothing. Because <laughs> so it's like has music so, going. so because I always, I always have music going, but for her, it's I like, like she likes she likes <laughs> quiet, and so, so I relate her, so. to that a Except whole at Christmas. lot. I like Christmas music, but for the most part, it's like I just want quiet. I'll put a podcast or listen and to something. Else. If, if there's a if we're on a um, if we're going on a date, there's some music that you know um, that that we that we like um, some things that we would we would both listen to, but but anyway. But you yeah. bet. Okay, so who's most likely to try a new recipe? Annette. <laughs> yeah. You would. You're more adventurous. Oh so yeah. Kind of said new recipes. Mm-hmm. Can I ask this one down here yeah. at the bottom? Yeah, that you is can ask any. Pretty epic. Who would forget to pick up a kid? <laughs> me, <laughs> probably you. Me. No way. Yes. I never oh, would have thought. Sorry, sorry, I've done it before. <laughs> You just get so oh, busy, yeah. you know. Oh my gosh! How long have they been there? I gotta go get them. Not Justin for sure. Oh. No, Justin would remember the kids. Yes. Um, Maybe not remember to take them out of the car, but no. <laughs> no, <laughs> just, just, just kidding. Who's more likely to respond to a text faster? Annette. Me. I believe that. Actually, yeah. I know that from <laughs> personal experience. I look at his phone and I'm like, "You have 32 messages." <laughs> <laughs> Who's most likely to forget something at home? Annette. Me, yeah. Annette. Who's most likely to tell a secret from the pulpit, like a like Jesse moment? Me. You? That would be him. Yes. For sure. Really? <laughs> yes. Has he ever said anything you're like, oh, we're going to have a talk about that one? <laughs> yeah, yeah, him. He always, yeah. I'm like, oh, what is well, he going well, to say? Well, it's more like, I'm, oh, whew, okay. <laughs> uh, do you glance over and be like, okay, I need to... Uh, he needs to glance over more. I can I can be very transparent, so yeah. you can't be, but you're pretty good about that. Who's uh, most likely to get angry when driving? Me. Just already knew the answer to that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so I'm just like yeah. Who's most likely to do laundry first? Probably me. Yeah, but who puts it away? No, he does. Yeah? Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Man, Laundry. we need some classes. Come over. Yeah. Classes. Man. I know. It's like oh, a marriage, he does marriage counseling own. request right here. Yeah, no. He'll, he'll wash his own oh. stuff. Oh, so. praise God. That's yeah. great. But then, I'll, but, then, but then I'll, you know, I'll, I'll put hers away if I she's already washed it. Or, yeah. It just depends what we have going depends. on, what, what I know she's doing. Like I, that's yeah. so sweet. He does laundry Aww. well, very well. So, who's more likely to overspend? Me. Oh gosh, all him. the time. Yes. She she's very she's very <laughs> she's very frugal. She's very. I mean, I'll have to make her go, just go buy some clothes. I'm I'm okay. Oh, I have gift and cards saw, from over a year ago that wow. I haven't even used yet. And so, oh my goodness. But going shopping with him is ridiculous. <laughs> Oh, we need this. Oh, let's get this for the oh, so let's get this. New like, surround ah. sound. Have you <laughs> have you ever bought anything super ridiculous? Like oh, like you like Pastor Nets. Like why in the world would you buy that? Like a fishy I'm sure boat. I have, I'm but sure you have. Um, <laughs> but typically, if it's if it's uh, we we are in agreement that if it's over a certain amount, then then we'll talk to each other about it. Yeah, so I it's it's it, I don't I'm not gonna. So. I wouldn't put us in a position to, to financially hurt us and yeah. and make, sure. make a bad judgment. So in one of the other podcasts, which you'll hear in a few weeks, yeah. um, one of the other couples talked about how they buy Christmas presents without the other person knowing. So how do you guys do that? Oh, the best gifts that I get are the ones that I tell him. <laughs> I put some shoes on, on the counter with this lady at Dillard's and Valentine's is coming up. And those are the ones I want for Valentine's. Those are the best gifts. 
Um, I would what do you say, specifically tell that's him? Yes. Yes. Was. Oh, that's I went and tried awesome. them on, and they are awesome. The lady's holding them. Oh, that's great. That's so, great. Is, is that the pressure's funny. on. Yeah. Go get it before she takes them off. And hold. Dillard's right? has yeah. the best shoe sales, like in the beginning of February, end of January, the best sales Aww. for shoes, especially. Nice tip. Go shopping. Uh, I, I, another thing that we do is, or she has, um, we don't believe in having debt. But we do both have credit cards um, that we get miles and or reward right. points for. So pretty much all of our bills we put on credit cards and then pay everything right. off every month. So so she has a card um, and um, and then I have a card uh, that go to two separate that are two separate things. So I know it's around Christmas time. I'm not going to like. I wonder what she got me. You know, so <laughs> go snoop around at the statement. Yeah, but but I I trust her financially, so I don't ever have to worry. Never as far worried as about Christmas. We usually are planning a trip or something, so we say, yeah. "Don't get anything. Maybe just do stocking." Yeah, a lot of times we'll just do. A lot of times we'll just do stocking. You know, stockings for each other, and then we'll save up um, for the trip in February. Yeah, Aww. and so we'll do that. Or sometimes we've done where we, you know, even for the kids, where we just said, "Hey, we're going to take the whole family to a certain place for in the summer, and that'll be like their gift, and we'll still get them a few little things." Yeah. That's good. Yeah. It just came up in one of the other podcasts. I, Hannah wasn't on it, but I was like, I was like, that's a good question. I don't yes, think that people people so like cute. how do I yeah. how do I get them something without them knowing? We share this bank yes. account, and I know. yeah, I, he has surprised me though. I have had like the best surprises, like a ring. I mean, when did you get me this ring? Last like, year, James for, Avery. Last year for Mother's Day, I believe. Was it Mother's Day? Oh, and so he for, will and, surprise no, it was, me. It was, yes. it was anniversary. Yeah, he will surprise me with stuff, different like rings. I like rings and <laughs> earrings and stuff. Speaking so. of, we'll close uh, with this one. Who's most likely to forget an anniversary? Neither. Mm-mm. Neither of you guys have forgotten a birthday or anniversary of each other. No. That's so sweet. That's so I would, I would, I, I would what? say I may have not. I may have not planned it far enough ahead, like for a particular restaurant. You know, before COVID, it was never an issue in Fort Worth getting reservations. But well, now it. But is. now it's like it's like there's some places that we go. I'm like, yeah. Some of our f- favorite higher end restaurants. It's like you've got to book it like ten days out. Okay, or, now a few months out, because like now when yeah. we're recording this, you already need to be planning for February. Okay. No, yes, get no, it. No, 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 no to sell. It. No, no, no to, to sell. sell. Eddie V's, call no them. Sell. Call them right now. <laughs> call See, now. Ryan's birthday is in February. I know. And so then know. it's like we have to start. I mean, you have to start booking those reservations early if we're going to go out to eat somewhere because February, everything's is it packed. Is the 12th or 21st? The 12th. The 12th. Yeah. yeah. Yours is the 21st. It is. The only thing with the nicer restaurants that we found, though, when we've gone to like Eddie V's or mm-hmm. Capitol Grill or Del Frisco's is they, for Valentine's Day, they, they have a set menu. And it's yeah. like you're kind of like, oh, oh this, that's true. This is all we they have, do. and this is the only thing you get. And it's like they do. So it's, sometimes it's like you know what it's we did down. have a great one during Snowvid. Yes, I was gonna say we we ordered did. takeout because like, we're snowed, so basic. Didn't it? it it got canceled because of the snow. And, and I was like, made, what am yeah. I gonna do? Yeah. I just wanted wings. You did Pollo <laughs> Rosa Maria. I did from uh, I did a not from uh, yeah that from was awesome. from Carabas. That's I'd, right. It was I found a, I found a I found a recipe online. I found a recipe of her favorite dish online and, and was able to make it. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, it's delicious. Sweet. So our normal question at the end is, how are you winning in life? Oh. And so this is a twist on that question. Oh, I love that. Yeah. So instead of how are we making winners in life, uh-huh. how is your spouse winning in life? How are they winning in life? Yeah. They got me. Yeah. Oh, this is oh, so good. So good. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, we gotta win. end on. I, 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 I don't. <laughs> I, don't, I, don't have, I don't have a better response to, than that. Yeah. So I have to That's say, you're winning because I'd say we got each other. Uh, well, I, I think when we we talked about it, I was like, because uh, she's put up with me. <laughs> <laughs> she's a, she's a great woman of endurance and perseverance. Yeah, so. he's, I always say he's everything I never knew. God always knew, but I never knew what I needed or wanted, you know? Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. That's the perfect cheese. Uh, yes. Well, I'm thankful perfect for you. Perfect cheese. This is a perfect cheese. You know, when you'd watch all those romantic movies and you're like, oh my gosh, I want that. And it'll never be. Well, it can be. Absolutely. Yes, and you got it. I got try. it. So I'm your Ryan Gosling to your notebook? Is that yes. it? Oh, stop <laughs> right now. Now we're really getting that. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> What a reference! Well, <laughs> can I say, can I say one more thing? Please. 
for both uh, spouses or you're going to be in a marriage uh, in the future. Um, so for whether you're single or you're married, you know, really it comes down to how you serve each other. Right. And um, anytime you approach something from the heart of a servant, um, you win. Yeah, the things that you the things that you cultivate grow, things that you serve will grow, and so that's the main thing. So that's good. I love that. I agree. Oh, that's such a sweet thing to end on. Just serving each other. That's super good. Um, a good thing to keep in mind, especially on Valentine's Day weekend. So um, thank you guys. Thank you for leading our our house well and for pastoring us well and to leading by example in marriage i mean i think it's a rare find in the not just in the church but in the world at large to find a couple that is not only so in love but also leading and living in life really well so thank you guys for being that for us thank you everyone for listening in our church family and beyond we're so glad that you joined us for the series and just remember every friday morning a new episode drops so we look forward to you listening to another winning conversation